In this quick video, we're going to take a look at the Caravel GPIO and how it works. Caravel is the part that eFabless gives us and we put our designs inside. So in this section here, we've got my uh, designs inside. And then this part here is the controller, which includes a RISC-V core and some memory. And then we've got the GPIO pins. So we're focusing on the GPIO pins in this video. So let's take a quick look, zooming in. And we've got a lot of stuff going on here. It's much more complicated than you might think. Let's take a look at the block diagram. This is the overview from the data sheet put together by Tim Edwards at eFabless. And we have a, a shift register that we can um, load with data from the Caravel RISC-V processor. So we can write some firmware to set this up. And then we've got the actual pad here and then we've got uh, input and output and an output enable bar. So the bar means it's the opposite. So if it's low, then the outputs are enabled. And if it's high, the output is disabled. Here's the memory map. So by writing these ones and zeros to this region in memory, we can set up the IOs as we want. And this is a closer look at the actual IO block that we've got in the Skywater Read the Docs website. So to make an experiment, we've got three major blocks to control. We've got the I.O. block and we control that by writing some firmware for Caravel's Pico RV32 RISC-V processor. Then we've got the test bench and that's going to generate test signals and let us look at the output test signals. And then finally, we've got the device under test. And the device under test is the bit that goes inside Caravel and then is connected to these I.O. lines. So this is the experiment I want to do. I'm going to choose these different pins and then we're going to run all these different tests. So for I.O. disabled, I'm going to um, make an output from the test bench, uh, turn off the inputs and outputs inside the um, GPIO block, and then I'm expecting to not see any inputs uh, inside the device under test. Uh, then, for example, um, I've got an output enabled with the output enable bar low, so then when the device under test is making an output, I should be able to see the input and finally, I'm doing a test with um, that I would need if I was doing something like an I2C controller where the data pin is both driving and receiving. So both input and output need to be enabled. And then sometimes I'm driving from the test bench and I want to see that signal come into the device under test or the device under test is driving the signal and I want to see that signal come out in the test bench. So let's take a deeper look at these three main blocks. Let's start with the device under test. So the device under test is a very simple interface. Clock reset, I'm not actually using the reset. And then I've got the IO in, so that's the input from the outside world. The IO out, that's going to the outside world. And the output enable bar. So if that is low, then the outputs are enabled. Otherwise, the outputs are disabled. And then for my tests on pins 11, 12, and 14, where I want to drive the pins, I just assign them directly to the clock. And then uh, for the tests where I want the um, output enable to be high, I set it here. And for it to be low, I set it here. So that matches up with the test table. Now here's the test bench. Start off by uh, powering up the chip correctly and then uh, and turning off reset. And then I'm waiting for a pin to go high and that's controlled by the firmware. And once that goes high, then the test continues. And all I'm doing is basically um, making a square wave on 8, 9, 10 and 13 pins for 20 cycles. Finally, let's take a look at the Caravel firmware. We've got a few um, defaults for us, for example, this one, standard output, and this is setting the memory map so that we get a pin as set as an output or as an input with no pull up. And I've made another two. I've made one where it's both in and out. So I've got the input disable low and the not output enable bar also low. And then I've got a GPIO mode disabled. So input is disabled and output enable not is low as well. And then for my test pins, um, I'm setting them all up here. So disabled input and that matches up with the table. And then I've got one pin that is controlled from the management. So this management standard output means I can control it from within the firmware rather than the device under test controlling it. 
I apply that configuration. So what we're doing there is waiting for this long shift registered um, configuration to go through all the GPIO pins because they're connected in a big long serial link. And then I set that top bit high and that's what the test bench is waiting for. Then we're going to wait 20 cycles of the test waveform, capture that and then take a look in GTK wave. So here's the results. This is these first signals are what we're seeing in the test bench. And then these second set of signals are what we're seeing uh, for the device under test input and the device under test output. So for the first test on pin eight, IO is disabled. So we're generating a waveform, but nothing is appearing on the input. For pin nine, the input is enabled. So we see the output signal from the test bench going out, and we also see that coming in on the device under test. I repeated that test, but with output enable bar zero. So that turns on the output enable just to see if that made any difference. And it doesn't make any difference. So the, the input signal still makes it through to IO in. And then test uh, on pin 11. Output enabled, but OEB is high. So output enable bar, so that's not enabled. So we see nothing coming in. We've got a, a Z high impedance output on pin 11, but pin 11 is being driven inside by the device under test. Pin 12, we're also driving the pin, but now OEB is low. So we do see an output coming from the device under test. And then the last two are this tri-state um, thing that we would need for an I2C controller. To start with, we generate the signal. So on 13, we send this signal and it comes in um, here, there we go, on the input 13. Um, and then we swap it over, OEB goes low, and now um, the device under test can drive and we get that, um, that out on pin 14. So unless you're using a pin as both an input and an output, it's safe to set OEB to always be zero. And then if your pins do need to be outputs, then they will work. And if you want to set them to be inputs, they'll also work. So the only way that you need to change the configuration is in the firmware for Caravel. So I hope that video is useful for you in your own designs. Uh, let me know if you need to know anything else.